How's it going guys? Gaming God is here with a review on Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. This game is a sequel to Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch, only this time we are following the story of our new main protagonist, Evan, the former king of Ding Dong yes. Dell. In this open world action role playing game, the player is introduced to some new characters along with some new gameplay features. Since I won't be comparing the two games in this video, I'll have a link to the review of the first game in the description or you can click on the little icon in the upper right hand corner. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what this game has to offer. Watch your back. Nino Kuni 2 offers a huge open world that allows the player to explore, do side quests, and build up their very own kingdom. This is already different from the first game, as the world is much bigger and we have sort of a building feature implemented into the game which I think is really cool. The player will gain access to item variety, better weapons, better armor, new skills, tactics, and so much more upon upgrading the kingdom and facilities around the kingdom. As the player grows the kingdom, they can appoint and obtain citizens to specific jobs. Certain citizens will have a higher skill level in certain tasks, so it's best to appoint them to the jobs that they perform better at. Now, the one thing that I kinda didn't like about the building aspect is that every shop has a set in stone location. I can't pick it up and place a shop where I want it. Other than that, I really wouldn't consider this a horrible feature, I just like the option of customization. <laughs> Since you are building up a kingdom, you will still need people in order to manage the specific shops in your kingdom. Like I mentioned previously, certain citizens will be fit for specific jobs, and in order to obtain these citizens, the player can take on side quests what? by talking to the characters marked with a little star in the different towns. The player can also take on specific tasks that act as side quests, but instead of accepting them from the citizens, these tasks are accepted by the Swift Solution Shop. As you can see here, the map is much bigger, and the player has to travel from the different locations by foot or by boat. Of course, once you activate the little markers, the player can easily fast travel to the different locations. While exploring the map, there will be many areas for the player to enter, like villages, other kingdoms, and even dungeons. The player will find randomly placed treasure chests, with some being easier to access than others. Mobs will roam around freely for you to either attack or avoid depending on your playstyle. Lastly, the player can take part in skirmishes, a type of battle that can be accessed from flags that appear around the map. Some are story based, while most of the skirmishes are either side quests or placed randomly for the player to take part in at any given time. Upon accepting a skirmish, the player can pick out some helpful perks. Based on the amount of KG you have will limit the amount of perks that you can actually have in the skirmish. Another thing to note is that each skirmish has a set level. Some around the world might be too powerful for you at first, but of course doing them will help you level up and accomplish all of your skirmishes goals. Now let's take a look at the battle system. The player can have up to three party members on the field at a time. The three characters selected will also follow the player around on the map. As I mentioned before, enemies will wander around the map freely and of course touching the monsters will start the battle. The player can control any of the three party members you select. This is nice because the character you play during the battle will also be the one you run around as. The player has a normal attack, a heavy attack, and skills along with their three main weapons and a ranged weapon. Now that's a lot of options, but don't let it overwhelm you as it's not 100% necessary to use everything you have in one fight. Honestly, you can use whatever combination of attacks you want, of course some attacks might have a better advantage against certain enemies than others. Once the battle is finished and the enemies drop items, money, and experience points. Characters will level up as you partake in battles. As far as I know, it seems like the experience points are evenly distributed amongst the party members. Next up, we have the game's graphics and audio. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom is, of course, in the same Studio Ghibli art style as the first game. Now, we do have the normal 3D character models, a chibi style character model, and of course, some animated cutscenes. This is very interesting as the normal models are used in battles, the different towns, and even dungeons, while the chibi style models are used during skirmishes and the world map. Lastly, we can't forget about our still images, which are nicely drawn in my opinion. As nice for the game's audio, the game features a nice soundtrack and voice acting. The game itself isn't fully voiced, but the bits that are sound really, really good in my opinion. Coming to the end of the review, let's go over the pros and cons based on my personal experience with the game. 
First and Pros would include great character development, a wonderful story, cute character design and graphics, which is in the Studio Ghibli art style, of course, good voice acting, a beautiful soundtrack, lots of exploration, and lastly, building the kingdom of Evermore. As for the cons, I don't really like that I can't freely place the buildings where I want them, and of course, the minor technical difficulties with the AI running into walls. Nino yes. Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom gives the player a great story of a boy who lost his father and needs to find allies and friends to help him along the way to fight against the evils in the world while building a kingdom of his own. As the player, we get to explore so much more of the world that was introduced to us in the first game of the series, and honestly, it's breathtaking. Yeah, the graphics are cartoonish, well, anime-ish in this case, but I personally love playing games like this way more than other styles of games. Overall, Nino Kuni 2 gets an overall rating of 9 out of 10. It's definitely sure, a good game if you're see. looking for something with a cute yeah, art style that isn't too hard to learn with lots of exploring and side quests, then I would definitely say it's worth putting the time into it. This game isn't super challenging or anything like that, it's actually rather chill, which is a plus for those stressful days. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on social media. All of my links are in the description below. This has been a Gaming Goddess Review. And remember, keep on gaming.